Hello and welcome. My name is Brendan Stubblefield from Texas Brewing Incorporated. We're here today to help you brew your first homebrew batch. It's real simple, real easy. If you guys can boil water at home, you can make your own homebrew beer. There's going to be a few things that you need to be able to accomplish this, and we have those available on our website at txbrewing.com. Uh, we have our uh, most popular kit. This is our deluxe equipment kit. We're going to show you all the stuff that's inside there, how to use it. You also need an ingredient kit that uh, will be able to make five gallons of beer. And then also you'll need at least a five gallon stainless steel pot. If you don't have one at home, we have them available on our website. They're very affordable. We have them manufactured for ourselves, So we're able to cut out the middleman and pass that savings along to you. So uh, homebrew beer is, is the best beer in the world. And there's a lot of reasons why. Uh, first, first and foremost, I think the most important part about uh, homebrew beer is that you get to tailor make recipes to the, to the taste that you like. The second thing is, is I'm not really brewing for a profit, so I'm able to do some things that commercial breweries uh, can't really do because it's not viable um, financially. And third thing is, is I have a little bit of time on my side, so I can afford to wait for my beer to mature, unlike uh, some commercial breweries that are able to have to push their beer out or right away before it may be actually uh, at their peak. So uh, there's a few things that we're gonna go over today. We're gonna look at uh, our uh, ingredient kit that we're gonna be brewing today is a, 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 the Sweet Texas Crude. It's uh, very easy to drink. And if you guys have ever had left-hand milk stout, you know you've had something similar to this. Um, and we're going to show you all the steps it takes to get there. If you guys purchased a new pot, it's always a good idea to take two or three tablespoons of PBW and actually use it to clean your new pot because there's lots of contaminants that may be on your pots from the manufacturing process. You don't want to use any kind of detergent or soaps because these can also leave off flavors in your beer. So make sure to get something that is actually made for brewing. I wouldn't use anything abrasive as well. Um, I'm just going to use a few paper towels that are not abrasive. Go ahead and clean this up. Make sure that it's good and clean. Make sure there's not any kind of residual oils or anything left over from the manufacturing process. Now when you use PBW it's always really good idea to make sure that it's really thoroughly rinsed well. You can also use PBW and let it soak overnight. That's a good idea as well. Today we're in a little bit of a pinch for time, so we're going to actually just scrub it a little bit and then we're going to rinse it out real well. All right, I think that's going to about get it, so we're good to go. Okay guys, now that we got our pot all good and clean, the next step is, is we got to talk about water. Water is very important to brewing and the reason being it's 90 to 95 percent of your beer. So if you don't like the way your water tastes at home, make sure you don't use it because if you do, you're going to taste the same things in your beer that you don't like in your water. So if you do like your water at home, the one thing that I will say is make sure that you remove the chlorine from it. Okay, there's a few different ways that you can do that. One of the ways you can do that is through a carbon filter. That is uh, probably the most popular way to do it, or probably the best way to do it. Uh, you can also use Camden tablets or potassium metabisulfate to help remove the chlorine as well. Or you can use bottled water. If you use bottled water, that's fine, as long as you use the spring drinking water. Make sure you don't use distilled water, okay? Also, we're gonna put about three and a half gallons in here. Uh, that's a little over half of what we've got here in a volume. That's a five gallon pot. If you can put a little more in there, that's okay. That's fine too. Just make sure that, and remember that the more you add to the, the pot, the more you got a chance of this thing boiling over when it comes up to a boil later. All right, so we're gonna put some water in the pot, get started. All right, here we are. We're gonna fill our pot up with water. Might be a better idea if you actually did it over the sink instead of on the stove, but 
with the way we've got this set up, we're going to go ahead and pour it in. All right. Got a little, probably closer to four gallons in there, or three and a half, four gallons. And that's what we're going to run with. So the next thing we got to do is we actually got to get our grains out of our, our kit. And we're going to show you what all is in this kit. And then we're going to put it together. Okay, guys, now that we've got our water in our pot, we're going to bring up our temperature up to about 152 to 154. You're also going to be supplied a lab thermometer in your equipment kit so you'll be able to test your water temperature. Now, once we get our water temperature up to that, we're going to put our steeping grains in. Not all kits have steeping grains, but the one we're going to use today does. So we're going to show you how to do that. Okay. Now that we have our pot here going, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our muslin bag out. You'll be supplied in one of these in your ingredient kit. They're just like a kind of a cheesecloth. And this is what we're gonna put our grains in. And then we're gonna steep this just like a tea. And you can see here that uh, you can expand quite a bit so you'll be able to get all of the grains in there. Okay, so we're gonna get our specialty grains out. This is where you get all of the different fancy flavors for, uh, or all the really in-depth flavors that you're gonna have in your beers. Uh, so example, this particular, this particular beer has roasted barley, and has chocolate malt, it has a little bit of coffee malt, and a Brees Victory, which is kind of like a toasted malt, so it'll give it a little toasty flavor as well. Probably not a bad idea to get somebody to help you with this just because it can uh, truly be kind of messy. So, depending on your beer kit, you may have a, a bunch of steeping grains and then other kits might not have very little or none just depending on the recipe. This recipe here has quite a bit of steeping grain. But this is what makes all your beer have all these different complexity. If you notice I did this over uh, my box here just so you don't get a bunch of grain dust all over the floor. Okay, so now what we're waiting for is we're actually waiting for the water to come up to 152 degrees. And then we're going to stick this in our pot and uh, let it steep for about 30 minutes. Okay, guys. Also, you'll be supplied a uh, lab thermometer in your kit, in your equipment kit. So what we're shooting for is about 152 to 154 degrees. It's really important uh, that you get it in with that do that uh, range okay also you want to remember too that you never want to get your steeping grains over 170 degrees this is really important because if you do you might extract tannins tannins are what you get in the, like a red wine that really dries out on your tongue so you don't really want that in beer it's really undesirable but if for some reason you do happen to get it over 170 degrees, just cool it off as fast as you can and don't freak out. It might be per per perfectly fine. So, Okay guys, now it looks like we got our water up to about 154, 156. Uh, it's really, you know, like we talked about earlier, the most important part is we don't want to get over 170. It's really, uh, a good place to start though is about 152 to 154. Uh, if you get up to 160, that's okay too. We're just trying to get all of these different sugars and flavors from these different specialty grains. But the most important part, like I said, is make sure that you don't get it over 170. Okay, so we actually turned our fire off. We're gonna get our grain bag here. And like I said, uh, I put a lot of dust in, that, in the box. That's no big deal. Now we're going to submerge this uh, grain bag here in our steeping pot. And it's okay to kind of dunk it a little bit just like you would in a, a tea bag. 
um, and you're going to notice that right away you're going to get some different color and stuff of that nature if you have some a darker colored beer and of course the stout of course is quite dark so I like to tie the muslin bag on the side of the pot I think it's just easier later on uh, and you can retrieve it very easily when we want to take it out of here okay so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to I'm going to put the lid on this is the only time that you really use a lid uh, during brewing and what this does is this helps us maintain our heat a little better now you want to check during this 30 minutes of time while you're steeping your grains you want to check periodically and make sure that you're not getting too cool because you still want to bring that temperature up if it gets a little cooler so all you have to do is turn the temperature up on on your pot but we're going to move on to the next step here in about 30 minutes or so once we get uh, 30 minutes worth of steeping time and we'll get to rolling okay guys now that we've actually uh, let our grain steep for about 30 minutes or so we're going to remove the grain bag and the most important part I can tell you is when you let this pull this grain bag out, just make sure that you don't squeeze the grain bag because if you do, that can extract tannins. We talked a little bit about that earlier about extracting tannins by getting your grain too hot. Well, you can do the same thing by squeezing the grain bag. So just let it drain out and then th toss the bag away. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our wort up to a boil, okay? Basically, that's what wort is actually unfermented beer that's another terminology so anyway we're gonna get busy with that and we can remove the lid here and like I said just let it drain out you really don't have to let it you know get, get the majority of it out of there but like I said don't make sure you don't squeeze it and squeeze all the, the water out of it It's a good idea to have a bowl or something next to you so the grain will drain out in there or you can just throw it in the trash can. Okay, that's probably pretty good. As you can see, that can make quite a mess if you don't have something to put that in. Okay, so now we're going to bring up our, our wort up to a boil and then we're going to move on to the next step. 